this amendment has to be withdrawn. There is no other way. There is no amendment to this amendment. <laughs> amendment has to go. Because it conceals, it prepares the entire system to conceal the information through the barrier of uh, information collection. Anywhere between 4 to 6 million RTI applications are filed every year in India and people are asking for information on a range of issues, on their basic rights, their rations, their pensions, their health, their education and also questioning the highest offices of the country. So whether it is questioning the Prime Minister's educational qualifications or asking about his foreign travels, who's travelling with him when he goes uh, abroad. The way we look at it is that it's impossible for any government today to try and control people when they're asking for information. There is no way to reach out to those 60 lakh, 80 lakh people every year to stop them for fi from filing applications. But there is a recognition that the body which is capable of ensuring that the government gives information even when it's inconvenient for the government to give is the Information Commission and therefore this is a clear attempt to control that institution. It is usurping the power of legislature to make amendment to the Right to Information Act by giving by making a last amendment to Right to Information Act. Why I am saying this is last amendment to Right to Act? Because it has taken over to prescribe prescribe the terms of conditions of the information commission not only the central but the state also that means what it doesn't say what what kind of state it is going to give you it is not certain about it and what is the independence where does independence lie independence lies in difficulty of removal or terminating or reducing the term of information commission that is the independence it's a symbol of independence that is the reason why you cannot disturb him until he completes the fixed term of five years or 65 years, whichever is earlier. We could survive only because of that rule. Had that not been the rule in the uh, Right to Information Act, it would have been finished long, long ago. Well, I agree that this uh, amendment is unnecessary and the best of the parliament time. Uh, but I would say uh, that if the government wants to do something, they should uh, look at the recommendations made by uh, the Central Information Commission uh, in its annual report. As you are aware, that the Central Information Commission prepares a comprehensive report about uh, you know, the activities of the RTI uh, applications received and also rejected on the different sections. And a section is devoted on the various recommendations made to uh, the government for uh, effective implementation of the RTI. Unfortunately, <coughs> to my knowledge, the government has not acted on uh, the recommendations made by the Central Information Commission. If the government is pro transparency and it wants to function uh, in a open manner. Uh, it must act on those recommendations made by the Central Information Commission uh, in its annual The government is keeping complete control over what the tenure and salaries, allowances, and terms of service of information commissioners will be. Of course, the minister on the floor of the house and otherwise has been saying that there's no guarantee that they will downgrade the sal salaries or the status of information commissioners but there is absolutely nothing in the law to prevent them from doing so if if they so want so uh, what mr ansari was talking about is that if the salaries and the status of information commissioners is diminished then who will be willing to apply for those positions also becomes a big issue the uh, rti act it is a statutory body, just like the, uh, the CVC at this point of time. And it is also performing the same functions as the CVC. And uh, the, uh, whereas the CVC has recommendatory powers, the uh, commissions have powers which go slightly beyond them, which is uh, uh, actually um, penalizing the bureaucratic uh, government officers. Uh, unless, of course, the courts uh, um, set them aside. So, if you look at, and then 
they have no problem with the Central Vigilance Commission's salaries being hiked and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's being recognized as uh, uh, an institution to uphold, uh, uh, to down, uh, uphold governance and uh, um, also to take care of the corruption issues. And yet, as far as the Central Information is commi Commission is concerned, where the Supreme Court has already read uh, the <coughs> right to information as one of the fundamental rights, and uh, the central government is willing to look at it as scans and uh, not give it the right. And I, I don't know whether to call it by any other name except uh, or describe it in any other way except saying that it is discriminating against the RTI Act. Parliament has a power to make a, a body which is powerful enough to enforce right to information and freedom of speech and expression. That is the idea of Right to Information Act. There was a, a parliamentary standing committee before 2005. All this was elaborately discussed. People made representations. Sudarshan and Achi Appan, he is the chairman of the parliamentary standing committee. He specifically stated that unless you give the darja of Central Election Commissioner and Supreme Court on par, it is not possible for a commissioner to discharge his duties of ordering cabinet secretary and principal secretary and other secretaries to disclose the information. That is what is stated by Sudarshan and Nasi Appan in his report. And based on that, the status of election commission was given. It is part of the law, not part of prescription as being done now. Not only this government, every other government that is going to come, whether in, in, the, in the center, will be prescribing different conditions, different terms, different uh, status and different salaries. Is that what you want uh, to do with the Information Commission, which is supposed to enforce freedom of speech and expression, including right to information? This is a very serious question. What government must realize and what it has totally failed to realize is that the Right to Information Act greatly strengthens governance. It may not strengthen government, <coughs> it strengthens governance. Oh. And therefore I have pointed out in my letter to the Honorable Prime Minister that it is his own slogan, minimum government, maximum governance. What is the best instrument, and acknowledged by him himself, mind you, in, this, in the National Convention of Information Commissions, which he attended in 2015, that this is an instrument through which we can learn how we are working and whether we are serving the people as we are expecting to serve. So, your government ki niti, sarkar ki niti hai, usko amal mein lane ke liye, dekhne ke liye ki logo tak, jane tak, tak pahunch rahi hai. Uske, uske liye, sarkar ke paas aur kaun sa purza hai. Any new policy being done has to be explained with details as facts and circumstances to people. Under what section? Section 41C. Right to Information Amendment Bill 2019 and 2018 are in total violation of section 41C. Total, complete violation. And there is no information about Right to Information Amendment Bill to the anybody unless and until it was introduced in the parliament. That means nobody in this country, not even stakeholders, not even the commissioners, not even the farmer commissions, not even the NGOs, nobody knows about it. So if you keep right to information amendment bill itself as a top secret, what information you are going to give tomorrow? A statement which was made via a tweet by one of the senior cabinet ministers in uh, the government uh, saying that all those who are opposing this particular amendment are actually maligning the government. This is mischievous and they are maligning the government <laughs> and these amendments in no way dilute the Right to Information Act or the autonomy of the Information Commissions. There was also a fact sheet that was tweeted out from the official uh, handle of the BJP and uh, in that also the first point states that the amendments in no way compromise the autonomy of the information commissions. Not only the right to information, but the freedom of speech and expression is also under a threat with this bill. The point is, right to information is an integral part of constitutional right under Article 19 1.8. This is the most important statement. And I am not saying this. Supreme Court said it three times before 2005. 
and Supreme Court said again three times after 2005. And not only me, it is the government of India that said it is a constitutional right in 2005. Do you know they are not supposed to make law for all the states generally because access to records is a concurrent subject. You cannot make law for the state government. Do you know what plea they have taken up in 2005? Very right plea, justified plea that it is a constitutional right. I am enforcing 191A. So when 191A is being enforced, it is for the entire country. So I am making law for the entire country. So that is the justification. And after 17 years, 13 years, how can you change? How can you say that it is not a constitutional right? Government is very secret about what are that uh, going to. Why did they not supply the draft of their prescription? They should have. So there is a secrecy around the amendment, secrecy in their minds as to what uh, rules are going to prescribe. And if this law to amend the Act itself is secret, you can imagine the disclosure position tomorrow. So this has to go, whether it is go, it goes to selection committee or goes to dogs, I don't know. It should go. But people should protest the amendment and protect the argument.